Hi everyone, I'm Raven and in this video I will be mentioning the other four sabas that I didn't mention in the first video. All thrilled to you. And the next Sabbath is Ostara or Spring Equinox, which is on March 21. Ostara is the celebration of the spring equinox and is a time to prepare for the beginnings of new life. The hours of day and night are equal and light is overtaking darkness. Ostara roughly corresponds to the Christian feast of Annunciation, also known as Gabriel Mass or Lady Day in England, celebrated on March 25. Ostara is also associated with the Christian festivals of Easter, which is held on the first Sunday after the first full moon following the vernal equinox, and Passover, which falls on the first new moon following the vernal equinox. The name Ostara comes from the fertility god, goddess Eostre, a Germanic deity associated with the hair and with the egg, both symbols of fertility and rebirth. Ostara is a time of new beginnings. Fertility, balance, new life, and rebirth. It is a time when the winter turns into spring. The light grows stronger, and with the light, the forces of masculine and feminine energy are also into balance. In Wicca, it is thought that the young god and goddess grow into the Sun King and the Lady of the Beasts. In one version, the goddess and the god become betrothed and will consummate their relationship at Beltane. However, as Ostara is 9 months to Yule, it is also thought that the goddess becomes pregnant at this time. Ostara is a time of beginnings, action, planting, feasting and socializing. It is a time to put your plans from in bulk to into action. Traditional activities surrounding this holiday include egg decorations, ringing bells and lighting new fires. The fifth Sabbath is Beltane. Beltane is a spring celebration that honors the fertility of the earth, a time to last, passion, fire, and abundance. Beltane is a fertility festival that celebrates the returning of the spring, the sun's warmth, and the nature's abundance. It is a cross-quarter festival, celebrated approximately halfway between spring equinox Ostara and the summer solstice Lita. Beltane is thought to mean fire of bell or bright fire bell associated with the Celtic sun god Bell. Beltane incorporates many traditions, including the Gaelic practice of bonfires to ensure protection from harm. On Samhain, the wild hunt is set loose to bring winter into the world, while May Day, specifically Walpurgis Night, is celebrated as the last night that the wild hunt of winter rides free. In Wicca, Beltane marks the emergence of the young god into manhood, known as the Stan King at this time. Stored by energies in nature, he marries the goddess, the May Queen, and she becomes pregnant. Beltane is associated with lust and passion. It is a traditional time for marriages and hand festings. Young unmarried adults would stay overnight in the woods, aiming while those who were married were given permission to remove their wedding rings and enjoy lusty freedom for the night. Often bonfires were jumped to encourage luck and fertility. It is a time of planting flowers, birds, bees and honey. As life springs forth for the fertile earth, this is a good time for all celebrations of fertility, new ideas, abundance and prosperity. At this time, it is thought that the veil between the worlds are at its thinnest, as with Samhain. Therefore, fairies are thought to return from their winter hiatus. Litha, Midsummer, Summer Solstice, June 21. Litha is the time of the summer solstice, the longest day of the year. It's a celebration of light stream over darkness and that of the bountiful beauty that light brings into our lives. Litha, or Midsummer, celebrates the summer solstice. It is the longest day of the year when the earth is at its closest till to the sun. Midsummer marks the end of the waxing year and beginning of the waning year, 
when the sun's power begins to fade and the days grow shorter. It is opposite to Yule or midwinter, which marks the shorter day of the year. It is said the term Litha comes from Anglo-Saxon names for the monthly rough, roughly corresponding to June and July, the early Litha month and the later Litha month. At this time, the powers of nature reach their highest point. The days are warmer and the earth is bountiful. Midsummer marked at the middle of summer in ancient times, with the beginning of summer at Beltane and the end of summer at Lunasa, Lamas. Astronomically, Litha marks the first day of summer, which is reflected on North American calendars. Midsummer is a great time to connect with nature and the outdoors. It is associated with much joy and feasting, including honey cakes and fresh fruit. Flowers, oak trees and sun wheels are common symbols. Bonfires were common, and some would leap over the flames to encourage fertility, purification, health and love. It is also thought that fairies abound at this time, and it was customary to leave offerings for them in the evening. Traditionally, on Midsummer Eve, it was said Elves, sprites and fairies are found in great numbers, making this a great time to commune with them if you choose. Lunasa, Lamas, August the 1st. Lunasa is a celebration of, in honor of the Celtic god Lu. For others, this festival is observed as Lamas, which celebrates the early grain harvest. This is the first harvest festival when plants drop their seeds to ensure future crops. Various mythos surround this festival. In Wicca, it is thought that the sun god ages and loses his strength as the sun rises further in the south each day and the nights grow longer. It marks the time when the first grains are sacrificed to ensure the continuation of the harvest cycle, therefore highlighting the link between life and death. As the first grains are harvested at this time, wheat, barley, corn, bread, whiskey and beer are significant. Traditionally, bonfires were lit, with the ashes of previous bonfires scattered over the fields in order to bless the fields, cattle and people. Lunasa was also an important time for hand, fe hand festings, second to Beltane. Trial marriages in Old Ireland would last a year and a day with the option of ending the contract before the year was out. Lunasa can be thought of as a time of personal reflection of actions and deeds and our gains and loses over the past year. It is a time when we start to reap what we started sowing in spring. This requires introspection and honesty as we look inside to examine our thoughts, feelings and decisions. We can identify events which turned out poorly and look for their lessons, as well as acknowledge success and consider how to carry them forward. Mabon, Autumn Equinox, September 21. Mabon, the Autumn Equinox, is a time of thanksgiving that celebrates the second harvest. The days and nights are once again equal with the night continuing to grow longer. It is also known as the second harvest after the first grain and fruit harvest at Lunasa or harvest home when much of the remaining crops are collected and stored before the long winter. Mabon is a time of thanksgiving and mystery. Various mythos surround this holiday. In Wicca, the god is thought to decline at this time, which is represented by the decline of the Earth's abundance. The goddess ages and passes into the dark goddess of our crown phase. We await the rebirth of the god at Yule, the longest night when the sun is reborn. Symbols of Mabon include apples, grapes, wine, gourds, pine cones, acorns, wheat, dried leaves, corn, sun wheels and pomegranates. Mabon can be thought of as a time of thanksgiving and balance, where we stop to recognize all of our personal harvests and are grateful for what we have been blessed with. And I hope you found this video useful. As always, I thank each and every one of you who made it this far and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!